to every creature. There are many platforms that you can use to preach the gospel of Christ to every creature. There are a lot of things, methods that you can use to reach out to people. Today I led somebody to Christ over the phone. That person is another province. Over the phone. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, it's another Sunday. It's another Sunday. We are not together at church. However, I believe that spiritually, we have always been together. I would like us to pray. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word in season. Your word, mighty God, that redeems. Your word, mighty God, that breaks the yoke. Your word, mighty God, Heavenly Father, Mutimwanga, that saves. I thank you, mighty God, that you are speaking. Even in this moment, even this morning, you are speaking, mighty God. We are dependent upon you this morning. We're saying, Father, speak. Our hearts are open for you. Our hearts are open for your word. We thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We are still continuing with what we, we started last week. As I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope you are still blessed there at home. You are praying. You are taking Holy Communion daily with your family and also declaring Psalms 91 daily. We have been doing that now for over a year and a half, taking Holy Communion every day, declaring Psalms 91 daily. And I've seen the results. Since we've started doing that, um, our children have never been sick. Both of them, we don't know what sickness is. We are living in the covenanted word of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power and the life in his blood. Amen. The cross and the church. Wow. You know, every time when I think about this word, I realize how much sometimes we veer away from the cross and miss the elementary teachings of the cross that will help us in this season. And I would like us as a church to go back at least at a little bit today and let us find ourselves in Christ. You know, when you don't find yourself in Christ, you find yourself in a situation and you start defining yourself based on the current circumstances and the situation. But when we find ourselves in Christ, we define ourselves on the finished works of Calvary. We define ourselves on the cross. You know, if we just, just uh, if we read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, I'm going to read a couple of verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'll start from 1. He said, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which, you also, which also you received, and in which you stand. I think the, the key word there, in which you stand. So Paul is, writ, is writing to the, to the saints in Corinth. He said, I have yes, declared to you the gospel in which they received. But they did not just receive the gospel. They stood on that gospel. So what is to stand in the gospel? How would you stand in the gospel? What, what, what makes you to stand in the gospel? Check here. Why, why, why do you stand in the gospel? By which you also saved. If you hold fast that word. You see? You believe that you are saved and you hold fast what? The word. So it, it is not holding fast the, the, the circumstances. 
It is not holding fast the situations. You hold fast that weight. I love this. He said, ah, I, I preach to you the gospel which you received, in which you also stand, in which you also saved, and you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. So you see, when, 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 we, when we veer away from the word, when, when we move away from what Jesus Christ died for, our salvation becomes in vain. We, we, we start experiencing things like people who are not saved do. We, we, we believe what the unsaved world says. We, 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 we move according to their word. That's what makes our gospel to be in vain. Hallelujah. So when the church focuses on the cross, you know that you are focusing on the salvation of Jesus Christ. You are standing firm. You know, I was asking myself, how did the disciples, I mean, those men were willing to die for the word. They, they, they never, ever compromised. They were thrown in jail. They were whipped. They experienced every, every, form of, every form of anarchy that you can ever experience. But when they came out of jail, they went straight to the synagogue to preach the word of God. They went straight to the street to heal the sick. They went straight to the, to, to the street and baptized them. What makes them be like that? I believe that the, our current situation as, as the church is the same as what the disciples have been going through. They never gave up on the gospel of the cross. They never moved to other doctrines that will soothe their heart. There are a lot of doctrines right now that are encouraging fearfulness and laziness in the church. Why are we not hearing that people have been forcibly moved out of the church because they want to pray? I love what happened in, in a certain situation, in a certain province in South Africa, where people gathered against all the rules because, they, because of their particular belief. They never reasoned. Because of what they believed in, they gathered. Because of what they believed in, they sang. Because of what they believed in, they praised the people what they were there, they were praising. The church, if it doesn't stand fast in the word, it will end up being the victim of the current circumstances. Hallelujah. So I would like us also to read verse 3. Say, For I deliver to you first all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That is the fullness of the gospel right there. Christ died for our sins. What is our sins? Christ died so that we who were separated from God can be reconciled back to God. Because the first sin that man committed was being separated from God by our acts. And now Christ died that so that we can be reconciled. And the Bible said that he, he was raised from, he was buried with our sins and raised again the third day with us. Let me tell you something before I can continue. Yesterday when I was here, yesterday morning I received a, a text from someone that I know that he said to me, I, I'm, in fact, he just sent me the results from one of the laboratories that is positive with COVID. And the whole day I didn't call the person. I received the text in the morning I only called that person around 5 o'clock. Because I called that person, the Holy Spirit started ministering unto that person. One of the ways that the Holy Spirit said was that you, you died in Christ. And if you are dead in Christ, you cannot be sick because dead people don't get sick. He said, dead people don't get sick. I said, what? As I was speaking... 
ministering unto him, the Holy Spirit was ministering unto me also that if people can realize that the cross was the place of execution, where mankind was executed for, this, for the sins that were committed by men, Adam. The last Adam came and he died for our sins, meaning we died in him. We are dead in Christ. So that, that is the word that the church should hold fast on, that we are dead in Christ. As I was speaking to him, I begin to declare that you are dead. You are not sick. You, I, mean, how, I said to him, how will you feel? You are carrying a coffin, going to bury someone, and you hear somebody coughing in the coffin. The cops coughing. So no, drop the coffin and you know, run. Because it's not normal that a person who is dead coughs. It's not normal that the person who is dead feels the pain. And I said, it was around five, I said, prepare your supper. Because you are telling him that the chase buds are gone. I said, no, prepare your supper. By, by the time your supper is ready, you, you, you're going to enjoy tasting your supper. You, you, you're going to eat your supper because you are dead. So if you are dead in Christ, you cannot be sick. You are healed. Around half past eight, I received a text. The text was saying, I fear your God. I picked up the phone. I said, what happened? He said, you know what? I'm enjoying my food. My taste buds are restored. I'm fine. The symptoms are gone. Why? When you die in Christ, sin cannot live in you. Why? Because Jesus Christ died for that sin. Why do I mean sin? Because I always say this, and I'm not going to get tired of saying this, that sickness is part of the law of sin and death. And our health is part of life and is the, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's our health. So when we die in Christ, we receive the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So this is who we are. Amen. Hallelujah. I think I'm preaching to myself. He said, he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is the full gospel in one verse. Christ on the cross, Christ being buried, and the resurrection of Christ. So we are resurrected with Christ. You are resurrected with Christ. Let me put this to you before I can go any further. When Adam and Eve sinned, God said, you shall surely die. Meaning, you will be separated from God. Because outside God, there is what? Death. It is death. Life outside God is death. Why? We were endured with the Holy Spirit. Genesis 2, 7 says, Then God formed a man from the dust, and he blew his spirit in him. The Ruha breath. And man became what? A living being. So man received dual life. The ability to live here on earth. That's life one. And also the ability to live in God. So the death that God was referring to was not life B. The ability to, to live, to die, to, to live on earth. It was life A. To be separated from God. And that has effects on what? On the body of a man. Because when man is separated from God, all forms of sicknesses, despair and worry becomes what? His portion. So, but when we live in Christ, we are outside despair, worry, sicknesses, and ultimately spiritual death. So that's, that's the reason why I'm, saying, I'm telling you right now that the basis of our survival in this time as a church is the cross. It is, it's nothing else but the cross. It is nothing else 
but the cross. Uh, if we go back to Romans, not Romans, 1 Corinthians 15, we'll go to Romans now. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1, Paul said, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which you also received, and which you stand. So, number one, are we receiving the word that we are reading and being heard, being preached? If we are receiving the word that, that, that we are studying and being, and being preached as a church, then we should stand up and, as a church and declare changes in this nation. Because that's who we are. Ecclesia. The governors. Hallelujah. So now let us go to Romans 5. I want, I want us to see something quickly. Romans 5. Romans 5 verse 1. We'll jump to, to 12. And then yeah, we'll, we'll go we'll all over here. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace through God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom we also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope, in the, in the glory of God. Therefore, being justified by faith. So we need to go back and believe that what Jesus Christ is, is who he is. Why do I mean that I say we need to go back? It is easy to get lost in the midst of all this other doctrine and forget the cross. It, that's exactly what is happening in the church right now. We can fight for the church to be opened. We can, we can march and do that. But if the, if the cross is omitted to what we are doing, we are no different than the world. We are only justified by faith in, on the finished works of Calvary. We are only the partakers of the righteousness of God by faith in the finished works of Calvary. We are only the rulers of, in this world. We reign in this, in this place by faith in the finished works of Calvary. I love what Paul says, that I determined to preach nothing to Jesus Christ and him crucified. Because to me, that is the pure gospel. Hallelujah. Check this. Verse 2, the, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. 3, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Check this, we also glory in tribulation. The darker the night is, the brighter the light. I'm talking to you, church, this morning, that we need to show more of the glory of God in, this, in, in these times of tribulation than any other season. We need to be known as a church does your neighbor know Christ? Does, your, does your everybody in your WhatsApp group know Christ? Does all, is, all, is everybody in your family saved? If there is one thing that we should be using this tribulation for as a church is to make sure that whoever that we know is born again, is led into Christ. Let the glory of the church shine brighter this season. Why? We know the cross has done it all for us. Amen. We all know that God is not pleased with the death of the sinner. I take responsibility when somebody that I know died without knowing Christ and I did not do my work. I did not preach Christ to that person. It becomes a burden to me that how did that person die? Uh, okay, it's fine, they are, they are dead, but where is that soul going? 
What have I done before this person can die? Did I preach Christ to that person? We glory in tribulation. Yes, other businesses are being affected by this situation. But as far as I know, churches are bearing the brunt. Pastors are starving with their families. Child of God, let the glory of God shine in your life by you rising up and do what Jesus Christ has endured on the cross. Endure this tribulation by making sure that the church of God is taken care of. By making sure that the gospel of Christ is preached to every creature. There are many platforms that you can use to preach the gospel of Christ to every creature. There are a lot of things, methods that you can use to reach out to people. Today, I led somebody to Christ over the phone. That person is another province. Over the phone, I led that, some, that person to Christ. It's not, that person is not in Haute, it's in another province. And that person said, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And I said, glory to God. Church, I wish I could be standing here preaching to you that you are blessed. Receive your car. Receive your house. Receive all that. No. But seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all those things shall be added. Those things shall be added. Right now we need to bring back the kingdom of God and the righteousness of the kingdom of God upon every living soul. That is the purpose of the church right now. Hallelujah. He said that knowing, we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance, to be able to, for the church to be able to persevere in the midst of persecution, it is one of the best characteristics of the church. Why? Jesus Christ persevered on the cross. Before he can even reach the cross, in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible said he sweat blood. He said to God, if it's possible, let this cup pass me. However, not my will, but your will. He knew the type of pain that he's going to endure. He persevered first emotionally and then physically. We are the church of Christ. We are saved by Christ. How do we persevere? You don't give up on prayer. You don't give up on studying the word of God. You don't give up on preaching the gospel of peace. And most importantly, you guard the peace in your heart by all means. Because without that peace, you won't be effective in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? He said, five said, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has given us the ability to, to love God irrespective of. Hallelujah. If you seek first the kingdom of God, you won't have to worry about the job. You won't have to worry about your family. You won't have to worry about anything. God will take care of your business. God will take care of your family. God will take care of your job. If we seek first the kingdom of God, the rest is God's business. Hallelujah. Let the cross be moved back. Let us go to verse 6. So for when we were still without strength, 
In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. When you were without strength, I want, I want you to, to, to imagine yourself before and after. Before you were born again, you lived. Some of you survived accidents. Some of you survived being mugged, being stabbed to death. You survived all those things. You were weak. And Christ died for you while you were still in that state. You were in your worst point of weakness. And yet Christ died for you. Now your strength is in Christ. Hmm. When, he said, now when you were still without strength, in due time Christ died for you. Now Christ is your strength. His death has become your death. He said, for in him we live. For in him we move. For in him we have our being. So that, that, that is the most powerful statement ever. Your being is in Christ. You are the most powerful person ever. You are the most powerful person ever. Be strong. Christ is still seated on the throne. He is still victorious. I want to put it to you that no situation or circumstances can remove him from the right hand side of the Father. He is seated there making intercession for the church, for us. Hallelujah. Let us, for scarcely a righteous man will one die yet pass, for a good man someone will even dare to die. But God demonstrated his love towards us, that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Your justification, listen to this child of God, your justification is in the blood of Jesus Christ. What is to be justified? To be declared just before God. To be declared righteous before God. To be declared sinless before God. Not to be condemned. What does that make you? It makes you someone who has all the authority and power to stand up and speak as if Christ is speaking. You shall declare a thing. You shall be established. Stand up, child of God. Refuse to be the victim of circumstances. You have been worried for too long. You have been complaining for too long about the situation. You have been down for too long. Arise and shine. For the glory of the Lord is upon you. You are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, for we overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of our testimonies, we did not live, love our life, what? Unto death. Meaning because we are died to Christ, we are no longer afraid of physical death. Our biggest concern is spiritual death. That's what I'm saying. The church now has a responsibility to preserve the spiritual lives of its people. And we need to stand up and pray. Hallelujah. Ten, for if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more have been, been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have received reconciliation. Twelve, I want us to read it. To, to, to look at this. Therefore, just as, just as through one man's sin entered the world, death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. But for until now, for, uh, but for until 
The law of sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. I'll explain to you that later. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even those who have not seen according to the likeness of transition of Adam, who is the type of him who is to come. But the free gift is not like the offense, for if by one man offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift of the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. If by one man offense many died, death reigned through Adam and Moses. I want to put it to you, this child of God, that the reason why I'm taking you back to the military teachings, I want you to go back and position yourself on the cross. That when Adam sinned, sin flowed through all mankind. Even those who have never sinned before, they were birthed in sin. They were born in sin. That's the reason why you ask yourself this question, who teaches a little child to sin? No, to lie. Nobody does that. Who teaches a little child to I choose someone falsely? You, you as a parent will stand up, but how, how did you know how to plan like this as a child and I choose others falsely and lie? It's because of the consequence of sin that flow through blood. So now why am I telling you this? How about what happened on the cross? The same power that reigns, the same power that reigns through Adam has now been nullified by the death on the cross. Now what we have now is life and life in abundance. That is the reason why as you, as you child of God, as much as nobody teaches the child to lie, you don't have to be taught not to lie. You just have to live in Christ and the grace of the finished works of Calvary will flow unto you as much as death was able to flow unto all mankind through Adam. To understand that where you are sitting right now, the life of Jesus Christ is, has flowed through you. So, so by one man's righteousness, we are all counted righteous. Why? By the reason of the cross. So when you pray, why am I telling you this? So when you pray, do not look at your humanness. Do not look at your yesterdays. Do not look at your past minutes. Focus unto Jesus, the author and the finish of your faith. Let what Jesus Christ did on the cross flow through you as you pray through that understanding. Your prayers go back through the cross and effect change around where you need change to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 15, verse 45 speaks about Christ. Being the last Adam. Why is he called the last Adam? That, that is the most powerful verse in the Bible. Powerful verse in the Bible. Christ, the last Adam. Why is he called the last Adam? Because through our faith in Christ, whatever that Adam did was reversed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us read 17. Say, for if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If by one man's offense, death reigned, we shall reign in life through the one who, Jesus Christ. Child of God, the church has been designed to reign through the one, Jesus Christ. Stand up from your situation. You are not a victim. Remove your victim mentality, church. Remove any form of victimization from your mentality. Stand up, 
take control, stand by the word of God, and begin to declare the word of God and see change happening. We are not called to complain. I said it on, on, the, on our midweek service that when Peter was arrested, the church did not go to the street marching with placards. The church did not march to Herod. The church did not march to prison. The Bible says the church went to a house and prayed and heaven moved. That is the church that Jesus Christ died for. Hallelujah. I want us to know that we are now walking in the righteousness of Christ. Not through our own works. He said, through one man's disobedience, death reigned from Adam to Moses and all those who have never sinned. Disobedience. So how about one man obedience? Jesus Christ. His obedience led him to the cross so that we as men can be killed on the cross and receive his life. In you, child of God, if your body is feeling some symptoms of sicknesses, I need you to declare that I, am di I, I died. I am dead. A dead person cannot be sick. I died in Christ. I cannot be sick. If there is a situation, you need to declare that that situation is manifesting through the disobedience of Adam. Therefore, I am in Christ. Christ obeyed God. So therefore, everything needs to obey him, including my circumstances and situations around him. I'm telling you what, what I've lived. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. You are loved. You are loved. The cross, listen to me carefully. The cross carried all the condemnation, all the sicknesses, all the failures, all the rejection, everything that was supposed to come to you, they were all imputed on the cross. So our faith in Christ Jesus gives us everything that Christ died for. Our shalom. The peace that surpasses all understanding. I want you to begin to declare that greater is he who is in me. Declare that greater is he who is in me than the one who is in the world. Why? Because your, your time for victory has started. The moment you pull back the cross and put it where it's supposed to be, you will start working from one level of victory to the other, from one level of glory to the other. Why? The death of Jesus Christ has done it all for you. Hallelujah. Number two, all the afflictions of this world. All the afflictions of this world are on the cross. Jesus Christ took them all. Took them all. Pastor, what do you mean that all the afflictions of this world are, are on the cross? What about what is happening right now? What about what is happening right now to me? I cannot get this and this. Child of God, Jesus Christ has done it for you. Stand up. Pray. Release the word of God. Have faith and act on that faith and see God coming through for you. There are certain things that won't come to your life while you are seated down. For faith without works is dead. You will say, but I do not know what to pray for. Romans 8.26 says, for we do not know what to pray for. We always ought to. But the Holy Spirit pray with us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Why? He was given unto us after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I want to declare to you right now this morning, 
that the same spirit that was Christ from the dead is giving life to every dead situation in your life. Be it your prayer life. Be it your word life. Be it your peace. Be it your giving life. I'm declaring this morning that the same spirit that was Christ from the dead dwells in you. Why? Because every power came through the cross. The cross of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are redeemed from the power of death and its consequences. I want you to believe that, child of God. You are redeemed from the power of death and its consequences. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, he declared, it is finished. So I want you also to declare that this attack on the church, this attack in my life, these attacks in my country, they are finished by the reason of the finished works of Calvary. Stand by the word of God. Hallelujah. You are the most powerful being. You know, this morning I was talking to, obviously, you know, I'm old, I spent time talking to God. I was meditating upon men. Men, we as males, male species, how much influence we have in this world. You look at every family, you look back into them. If it's good, there is a hand of men. If it's bad, there is a hand of a male species. I said, how much influence do we have? You know, we, we have said names, which is a name of a one male person who just decided then that from now onwards, everybody born after me will be called this name. It's, 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 the, it's the result of men. And guess what? Even the system has adopted it. You are called a dagada. You go to home affairs, they'll tell you that you are a dagada. You cannot. So all, all this, men has influence. So I said, okay, if men a natural man can have so much influence on earth. It is written that 99.9% of all wars in this world are caused by men. And even though I don't know any other war that was caused by a woman, but I know 99.9%. How about Jesus Christ, the man? If you, as a natural man, has so much influence in this world, how about Jesus Christ in your spiritual life? What can he, how much influence he can have in your family, your next generation, and everything that concerns you? So I want you to make a decision if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You might be living a life of confusion. Your life has been, have been, you have been living a life of confusion since then. You don't know whether you are coming or going. And you know that it is a struggle after struggle. It's a burden after burden. And when you look back, you see the hand of your forefathers in everything that has happened in your life. I want to put it to you this morning that there is a man called Jesus Christ who died for you on the cross. He is the only man who has the capacity, the capability of changing your lineage. His blood can walk back into the womb of time and undo everything that has been following you and give you a fresh new start in this life so that you can live a life of peace, joy, perseverance that will glorify God. Your life doesn't have to be, to be conditioned by what has happened in your past. Let Jesus be the Lord now. Let Jesus be the Lord now in your life. 
when you give him that position in your life, he takes over all the facets of your life. There will be no more such a thing called generational curse in your life. I don't care who said what when against your family, against your father. But when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, God becomes your father. And he does not have generational burdens. The only thing that he has for you is life and life in abundance. Let the only thing that you carry in your life be the cross. Because the cross has good consequences. Life and life in abundance. Amen. So I want you, wherever you are, child of God, make a decision. I'm not calling you on the promises of blessings, on the promises of say that that's a lie from heaven. That that's a lie from the pit of hell. I meant. I'm calling unto you that where the cross is, there is a victory for all areas of your life. And you'll start working in that victory. It builds up, just like as a child grows up from the age of zero up to, up, up, up to 80, that victory also builds up. Yes, I'm not going to lie to you, there will be challenges in your life, but they cease to be your challenges. Christ fight for you. There will be things that you don't like in your life, but when you pray, God will come through for you. As it is right now, without you receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, you are by yourself. Make a decision. If ever you are a child of God, you have veered off the faith, you are no longer believing in God because you're asking yourself questions, how could things be like this in this world if there is God? I want to put it to you that there are dirty people out there and there is soap. It is a choice whether we receive Christ or not. Go back to Christ. Let the cross be the center of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world, including you, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It is your time to shine. Come back to the gospel. Let the church of Jesus Christ arise and be part of the new wave of revival that is coming. Not only to the church, but revival to your life where every area that has been dead in your life shall be revived. If peace was dead, it shall be revived. If joy was dead, it shall be revived. If your finances were dead, it shall be revived. Stand up. Let Christ be your hope. Let us pray. Father, I thank you. Heavenly Father, I pray for all those who are watching me through different types of media. But Heavenly Father, let the cross be their source of hope. For a church without the cross is just another group of religious people. Father, I release the power of the blood of Jesus Christ upon them. Those who have just received you, mighty God, Holy Spirit, envelop them, be their guide. And those who are still contemplating to receive you, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, I pray that you convict them as you did in the book of Acts chapter 2. Mighty God, I also pray for the church as a whole. Father, change our focus. Let us all focus back to Christ and him crucified. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you very much. Don't forget to give to your church. Those who belong to the members of this church and those who want to give, 
the account details are, are at the end of this sermon. And don't forget also our project for the land, Group A and Group B. Continue to do what you do best, giving. God bless you. We love you very much. Bye. Father, I thank you.